Good morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day on this uh, wonderful Thursday God has given to us. We just had a great prayer breakfast with the Dadeville High School football team, cheerleaders and band members. Uh, Sardis Missionary Baptist Church sent a group over to help us serve, and Brother William Perry did the uh, devotion. And so we've had a great morning here at First Baptist and looking forward to a great day today. But if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 4. And have you ever said or maybe heard someone say, you can take that to the bank? You know, what they're saying is, you can believe that. This is absolute truth. It is so certain that it's, it's like money in the bank for you. Well, that's what Paul says here in verse 9 of 1 Timothy 4. He says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. And he says this a couple of times. So what's he talking about? What is this faithful saying that is worthy of all acceptance? What is this faithful saying that you can take to the bank? Well, it's this instruction he's been talking about. The fact that what Timothy needed was to be nourished in the words of faith and the good doctrine that he's followed to reject those profane and old wives fables and to exercise himself towards godliness. By the way, this is a message for all of us. This is one of those things that we say he's writing specifically to young Timothy, but it is a message to every believer because we all need this, whether we're ministers or not. And so we need to truly focus on what God has given us and what God has told us, this, this faithful saying that is worthy of all acceptance. Now look at what he says in verse 10. He says, for to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach. To what end? To exercise ourselves in godliness. Even the Apostle Paul, the great missionary of the Gentiles, the hero of the faith, the one that we all look up to and, and, and rejoice in because of who he is and what he's done, Paul says, even I need to exercise in godliness because bodily exercise profits a little. It helps his physical body. But can I tell you a little secret? If you live to be 70 years old, you know, that's what the Bible says. A man's life is three score and 10 years or 80 years old. Or even if you live to be 120 years old, that's just a drop in the bucket compared to eternity. So you can, you can exercise and you can take care of this physical body. And you should because God is, is, has told us that we need to take care of this physical body. And you can extend your life out to however long you're going to live. But it's nothing compared to the spirit that is going to be in eternity uh, in heaven with Jesus, if you're a believer. And that's what Paul is talking about. All of us need this exercise in godliness, not because it earns us a place in heaven. Listen, I don't care how moral you are. I don't care how great your reputation is. I don't care what your character is all about. I mean, I say that. I want you to have a, a good character. I want you to be a moral person. I want you to do good things. But not a single thing that you can do that will earn your way into heaven like that. But once you become a believer, you need to exercise those spiritual muscles. It's kind of like me. You know, uh, Sonia and I got back in the gym uh, earlier this year, and we were trying to be faithful and going two and three times a week, uh, about all we could fit in. And then everything happened, and the gym gets put on the back burner. Well, I can tell that I've not been exercising. It has affected my physical health. The same thing is true in the spiritual realm. If we do not exercise faith, if we do not exercise godliness, if we do not exercise through Bible reading, if we do not exercise through prayer and worship and fellowship and discipleship and evangelism, sharing our faith, if we as believers don't exercise those spiritual muscles, they atrophy. And instead of moving forward, we move backward. Paul says, so for to this end, we labor, we both labor and suffer reproach. Well, have you been there yet? Well, if you're a, a, a committed Christian, follower of Jesus Christ, if you're trying to live a life of godliness, there are going to be some people who are going to reproach you. <laughs> they're going to reprove you. They're going to speak against you. They're going to work against you. It is going to happen because they don't get it. And they're tools of the enemy. And they're going to do everything they can to tear you down. But Paul says, we labor in these two things. We suffer reproach in these two things because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. You know what he's saying there? Jesus is the Savior of all men. 
He is. He has died on the cross for every man, woman, boy, and girl so that they might have life. Problem is, only those who believe are going to reap the benefit of that gift. Hope you have a great day today. Be blessed. I'll see you back here tomorrow.